Joining us now to discuss is Jesse Jane Duff, a senior fellow at the London Center for Policy Research and a retired U.S. Marine Corps gunnery sergeant. Also with us is our Sultan, a counterterrorism expert and a foreign affairs analyst. Welcome to you both. Uh, Oz, let's start with you. The Supreme Leader Khamenei trying to mm -hmm. downplay the prospect of war with the U.S. Do you think that the U.S. and Iran could be headed for a military confrontation? I think there's a, a larger war of words looming right now than the actual threat of war. You know, there has been reporting from the New York Times and a number of outlets that there are preparations being made. I think it's sensible to always take pre preparations and precautions in, in these cases. But if you look at what's been going on for the past year, the sanctions that we have in place have been effective. Um, they've been pushing Iran towards uh, a domestic revolution of sorts. You've got a lot of turmoil on the ground um, with the Irani people. Um, the challenge will be, however, that if Iran continues these overtures through, you know, the Houthi proxies or through attacking our shipping lanes, um, that there may very well be a confrontation um, at hand. Jesse, the U.S. has definitely been sending more firepower to the Middle East. Uh, we've mentioned that the U.S. Abraham Lincoln Carrier Strike Group and a bomber task force already in the region. There's a Patriot surface-to-air missile battery also headed to U.S. Central Command. And there are also reports that the U.S. Arlington, that's an amphibious transport landing dock, which is in fact used to move troops, is also on the way. You take that information with the reports that the U.S. could be sending troops. And do you feel that maybe there could be something to the speculation from the New York Times? Well, uh, simply put, the New York Times is trying to stir up the masses. Of course, they have never been very supportive of the president's strategies as it is. But the president is not going to announce his plan. Let's be clear about that, number one. Number two, to move that number of troops into that region would be many months from now. This is not something that they're going to do overnight. First of all, if one of the proxies strikes, we would never respond immediately. Simply put, we have to ensure that this has been provoked and motivated by the Iranians themselves. But the firepower in the Mediterranean is simply putting, we're not going to tolerate any of our allies being attacked. We're not going to allow our troops to be sabotaged or attacked. And we're not mm -hmm. going to allow you to continue to bully the world over this Iranian deal. That's essentially what they're doing. They didn't get their way. And now they're trying to strong arm our European allies to stay committed to this, or they're going to raise up the pike on tensions for the entire Western uh, hemisphere and our allies. This is not a good situation because Iran is essentially losing with the United States. Jesse, staying with you, what scenario do you see that would justify the U.S. sending troops to the region, 120,000 or even more, as the president <laughs> said he would absolutely do? It would have to be quite extreme. Perfectly, uh, to state it perfectly, the president is not somebody who wants to see more wars in the Middle East. He has been doing everything he can to pull us out of that region to ensure that our uh, our national security is still protected. So for us to have a situation where we're at war with Iran, that is not something that this president wants to see ever happen. However, he doesn't want our allies or ourselves to be bullied. What kind of measure would it take? I think a flagrant attack upon our, air, our aircraft carriers, upon our ships, mm -hmm. upon our our allies um, and any attack upon our troops would be responded with something swift and just, maybe airstrikes. But when you start standing in troops, you're talking a full ground war. And I think that's going to be months from now if that were to ever even be uh, suggested. But I don't see it happening within the next few months at all. Oz, do you think that Iran has been deterred? Do you think that it and its proxies, because the U.S. said it would respond to an attack by Iranian proxies as well, may be backing off now? Mm -hmm. Now, I concur with what Jesse's saying. You know, you, you have to think about what's been going on uh, over the course of the past three years. Uh, we on the show have talked about attacks that Iran has had through its proxies and some of its actual direct um, military um, commandos, so to speak, across Europe, um, killing a number of assets that were a threat to Iran. We've discussed 
the challenges that we've had in Syria with Iran funding um, counterinsurgents to fight against the Peshmerga, as well as the SDG to the south. We've had issues with Iran in Iraq pushing their hegemony. And now we're having issues with Iran attacking the Saudis and um, basically trying to intercede with the shipping of the GCC countries. So when you look at this in, in a whole, you know, we have a number of assets that are worth protecting. We have a number of allies worth protecting. And you also have to think that the bulk of the global crude supply coming through these shipping lanes after Venezuela has been cut off, after the sanctions have gone into effect on Iran, are in a position where I, I see this as more a chess game that President Trump is playing, and I think he's playing it very well. Um, the opposite side of this is right. that I think it also echoes the strong um, the, the strong policy that he's had towards the Europeans, which is very simple, right. stop buying Iranian oil. All right, Oz, thank you so much. As always, our Sultan Jesse Jane Duff, appreciate it.